Welcome to a new video about Sheppy Show Response LC Ladder Filters. This is our example number three. In this example, we will discuss the bandpass filter design using the Sheppy Show Response and also the LC Ladder configuration. Of course, we will work out our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the objective design a Sheppy Show Response passive LC Ladder bandpass filter and use 50 ohm double terminated shunt input. Let's see first this generalized filter block. This generalized filter block will be the bandpass filter we need to design. The source resistor here and the load resistor RL are both 1 ohm, so they are normalized. So we will then scale it up to 50 ohm in order to get that 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. The specifications are the following. The maximum pass band ripple must be a max which is 1 db the minimum stop and attenuation must be 40 db and the lower passband frequency is 1.5 megahertz the upper passband frequency is the 2 megahertz the lower stop and frequency so that is the other way is 1 megahertz and the upper stop and frequency is 3 megahertz so we will need to achieve these specifications so let's look at our solutions. First step is calculation of the passband bandwidth, omega bandwidth, and also the center frequency, omega center. Now for our specifications, you, we know that the omega pH and omega PL, which is actually given in the frequencies, hertz. So we need to just transform that. That's just a difference between the upper and the lower passband frequency. You do the 2 pi times these values, you get now 2 pi times the difference here will be then 10 to the power 6 pi radians per second. The omega center is actually similar calculations we did for the brief Butterworth response uh, design. It's a geometric mean of the upper and the lower passband frequencies, but then in radians per seconds. So you take the square root of that one and then you will calculate this and you get then 10.88 mega radians per second or million radians per second. Step two is the normalized passband frequency, omega, the capital letter omega p, and also the normalized stop and frequency of the prototype low pass filter because we continue with the low pass filter design and then transform our low pass circuit into a band pass filter circuit. First, the capital letter omega p, that is the difference between the passband, upper passband and the lower passband frequencies divided by the bandwidth, that is always one by the way, so this is just a formula T here, and the omega s, which is the normalized stop and frequency, is the difference between upper and the lower stop and frequency divided by again the bandwidth, and then in this case 4. Now, the filter order is now calculated, again for the prototype low-pass filter. We use the similar formulas for the epsilon p using the Amex from this, which is 1 dB. So you calculate that, you get this 0 0.5088. And epsilon s is related to a minimum, which is 40. So And then you get now 99.99, almost 100. Now, together, you will now calculate this using this formula for the Sheppy Chair response. And that will give you R cosine uh, hyperbolicus and then the epsilon s and epsilon p and also here 4 over 1. Now you will get 2.8951. Of course we need to use integer values so you can try to do this design using a second order filter but that is definitely not sufficient. So we need to go up to third order so ns3. Now step 4 is the band mass bandwidth scaling factor kfbp. And that is, in this case, just equal to the bandwidth we have calculated. So it is not a calculation, you just set it up. That's then 10 to the power 6 pi radians per second. Also 500 uh, kilohertz, because the difference between the 2 megahertz and the 1.5 megahertz is 500 kilohertz. Let's bring the data together. This is what we have achieved. And now looking at a table of Chippy J response 1 dB ripple. This is, uh, the, these are the coefficients for the normalized uh, values. But then for low pass filter, as said before, we need to transform the low pass filter to the band pass filter circuit. So, and this is the row we need to look at. This is the X1, X2, and X3. And those are actually the uh, element values here. This is the low pass prototype circuit. You see the C1 that has a normalized value of 2.2036 farads. The L2 has a 0 0.9941 henrys, and also the C3 has the value of 2. 
0.0236 farads. Of course, these are not really practical in most cases, so we need to scale it up and then get these specifications. So first, what is a transformation from a low pass to band pass? Now, we replace all the capacitors into a capacitor and a parallel uh, combinations of inductor and capacitors. You see that actually here. So between node and A and B, you have a capacitor. Now you have a capacitor and an inductor in parallel. And all the inductors will be replaced by a series combination of an inductor and a capacitor. That's actually shown here. The P is actually for parallel and S is for series. So this circuit is now transformed in this circuit. So you'll actually get now, instead of three reactive components, six reactive components, so two times larger. And you need to have the uh, normalized values here, which are the RS normal, uh, I mean the scaled values or RS scaled and also the RL scaled. So we will use here prime values later. That's actually what you see here. So you see now the primes here. So these are the scaled values. Okay. Now moving on to the calculations, these are the formulas for calculating the CP1 using the coefficient here and also the Km which is 50 here. Why? Because we need to scale it up from 1 ohm to 50 ohm. So that's actually automatically Km. And Kf bandpass was 10 to the power 6 pi radians per second. It's also shown here. So everything is known also from the table. Now we can calculate this 12.89 uh, 12 uh, nanofarads. LP1 is related to that center frequency and also again the C1 in this fashion. Now you can now substitute everything here and you will get your 655.4 nano Henry's. CS1 is related to this formula. It's actually similar to the LP1. So now it has this omega center. And then using the coefficient actually here in X2, which is this actually L2, which was before in the prototype low pass filter. Now you can see that 0 0.9941. Now, when you do the calculation, you get now 533.5 picofarads. LS1, which is this parallel, I mean the series uh, inductor, that's also calculated using the L2, and also the KM and also the KF bandpass. Now you get now 15.82 micro Henry's. Now the final one is the CP2 and the LP2, but they're exact same as the CP1 and LP1. Why? Because they have the same coefficient. It's just C1 and that's now C3. It doesn't matter because they are symmetric. You can see that actually here. It's also valid for fifth order and seventh order because the X1 and X5 are exact same. X2 and X4 are exact same. There's also for X1 here and X7. So you can actually see that there are there is a nice symmetry. And then the LP2 is also given here is the exact same as LP1. Also RS pr uh, prime, so uh, this value here is scaled up to 50 times. So 50 times this one, so it will be 50 ohm and RL prime will be then also 50 ohm. Now we have the component values. Let's summarize them here. So we have now our eight component values here and the design circuit will be done here. This is now again this prototype low pass filter, which is unscaled, normalized. And this is now our scaled bandpass filter from this prototype low pass filter, which is normalized. So you'll have to use this circuit and see if this is really uh, according to the specifications we have here. So the simulation results. We bring up the body plot for the gain. This is the body plot for the gain. You see actually this ripple here. So characteristic of a band of a shabby show response. We see several um, labels here. Let's go one by one. The pass band gain is here 0.5. Why? Because the generalized filter here, which is the band pass filter, will be unity at this pass band gain. Then you will have a gain of 50 ohm over 50 plus 50, which is then 50 over 100, which is 0.5. And dB is minus 6.02 dB. Okay, now this is shown here. The lower passband frequency here is 1.5 megahertz. You see that is going down almost 1 dB and which must be maximum 1 dB. So it's also achieved. So passband ripple here is approximately 1 dB. So it goes down from minus 6.02 dB to minus 6, 7.01 dB, almost 1 dB down. And the upper passband frequency at 2 kilohertz, which is actually shown here, it is exactly 1 dB down. So this is uh, definitely uh, at the edge. And now we have the lower stop band attenuation. You can see actually the value here, which is minus 47 point, now almost 9 dB. And then the difference between this gain and the 
passment gain is actually our attenuation and that's shown here is 41.88 which is at 1 megahertz but we needed at least 40 so that is in this label also achieved so which is then also shown here for the upper one that's actually shown here and now we can see that this here is minus 47.91 and also going down at least 41.89 db which is at least 40 db so also according to the specifications but you'll see the standard frequency is given here 1.7314 megahertz now that's what's happening at this passband gate so we can say all the specifications are met and this circuit will do the job for this design all right guys this is our example number three considering the championship response for this bandpass filter using the lc ladder configuration if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible in the next video we will discuss also the stop band band stop i mean uh, variation of the championship response and continue with other lc ladder filter types see you next time in another video take care